Hey guys, Ronnie here with a low poly island tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to make both the image and the intro animation. So first of all, let's head on over to cycles render. And then we're going to delete the lamp and the pesky default cube. I'm going to select the camera, press alt R and alt G to bring it back to the origin and rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And I'm just going to pull it back a bit. So let's press Shift and C to make sure that our cursor is in the center here. Let's add in a plane, scale it up by 8, and add in a circle. Rotate on the x-axis by 90 degrees and pull it back. So the circle will be our sun, so let's name the mesh sun and click the plane and name that land. So let's select the sun, go into edit mode and press F to give it a face. Let's get back out of there. And then press Control 2 to give it a subdivision surface just to make it smoother. So I'm going to select the camera, press 0 to go into camera view, and press G and Z to move us up on the Z axis to wherever we want to be. Let's scale up the sun. Something like that's good. Move the camera up a bit more. All right. So I'm going to select the land, go into edit mode, and subdivide it by 100. Then I'm going to scroll in. I'm going to select a point, which will be the peak of our mountain on the left. Uh, let's, let's go there. And I'm going to turn on proportional editing and we're going to select the sharp fall off. Uh, scale it up on the Z axis or move it up, sorry. And we're going to scroll out the mouse wheel to shape out our mountain a little bit more. And that's good. I'm going to go in here and select another one. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to select one right here. Scale that up. All right, looking good. So let's head into the modifiers for the land and add in a decimate modifier. So let's select the ratio and bring it down to 0 0.04 for starters. Now you can see here we get a bit of decimation. Let's select triangulate. So let's try 0 0.03. You can just kind of mess around until you find what you like. You know, you can go like 0 0.01 to give you a really low low poly look. Um, so I'm going to keep it at 0 0.0. Let's go 0 0.03. And then I'm going to go back into edit mode. Select our peak here. And a little trick is to click the random fall off. Uh, press G and Z. Scroll out pretty far. And then just kind of move it a little bit. And what this will do is just give you, as you can see here, a bit more of a jaggedness, a bit more of a roughness. So you don't want to overdo it. But let's select each peak, do it a little bit. So, all right. Um, I'm happy with that. So let's hit apply. Now let's start working on materials. Before we get to that, though, let's add in a plane. Oops. I'm going to delete that again. I'm going to press uh, Shift and C to go back to the center again. Add in our plane, scale it up by 8, and move it up a little bit. This will be our water. Let's name that water. And let's add a new material. Call that water. Just set it to a blue. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go back and edit that later on. So let's go into material view. And let's scale this up on the Z axis a little bit just to give us taller mountains. And then let's add a material for that and call it land. And let's keep it as diffuse. Let's just Find like a sand color, so like a slight yellow. That looks good. Add in another one. Let's call that um, grass. And I'm going to go into just wireframe mode. Select uh, face select. I'm just going to kind of drag across there. And that's good for starters. I'll assign that to the grass and then select a green and just turn the brightness down on it. Head back into material view. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So I'm just going to select like around here and turn that into land or the sand material. All right. And this sand is looking a little yellow for my taste. So I'm actually going <laughs> to, a little yellow for my taste. I'm going to maybe turn the brightness up, put it back. I'm looking for more of like a peach, maybe. 
That's good. Um, so in this instance right here, I'm going to press K to bring out the knife tool. Select right here. I'm just going to move us across to right there. Press Enter. And I'm going to select all these and turn those to grass because I don't want it to be too far down. But So that's good. So now we're going to add in another material. Call it snow. I'm just going to keep it as is. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select the tops of our mountains, the very peaks. And assign the snow. Assign the snow. Assign the snow. There you go. And if you want to drag it out a little bit, maybe. All right, that's good. Let's uh, turn that into snow, though. All right, uh, looking good. So that's it as far as the land. I'm going to create a, a sun material, call it sun. Let's hop into rendered view. And then let's drag this out and add in a node editor. Get rid of this diffuse. Add in an emission. Plug that in. Let's set it to four. Actually, let's go three. And just give it like our whatever color we want our sun to be. In the meantime, let's head over to our um, scene here. And let's apply a uh, click color management. Let's switch switch us to the filmic just because it looks a little bit better and I'm going to select base contrast for look. So what that really did was you'll basically always want to use filmic if you're going for anything that's supposed to look a little realistic. Just the way it handles color is so much better. So okay I'm happy with that. That's a good uh, sunset look. So let's head over to the world view, select use nodes and change the color just to an environment texture. I'm going to apply this HDR that I have, and I'll uh, supply the link to that in the description. It's a free HDR, along with a million other HDRs on that website. So just check the description for that. I'm going to set the strength to 1. Point, let's go 1.2. Okay. So let's add in a plane, rotate on the x-axis, and move it kind of far back. This will be the sky. So let's name that sky. Let's scale it up. Oh, maybe not that much. All right. Let's head into material view. And we're going to add a new material to the sky. Let's name that sky as well. Let's add in a mix shader. And a gradient texture. Plug the factor in. And we want to rotate this on the y-axis by negative 90 degrees. So that way we have this black on top and it transitions into white. Let's switch this to easing. So it just makes it a little bit uh, softer of a transition. And let's scale on the z-axis, just compress it a little bit. Let's get rid of this diffuse. We're going to add in two emission shaders. Plug each of them in. And this top one will be the bottom of our um, gradient here. Let's set that to like a yellow. And then let's set the top to a purple. All right. I'm going to just kind of play with it just by scaling on the z-axis and just moving around on the z-axis to find what you like. And then we're going to add in another mix shader. Plug the factor in. And now we're um, mixing between these three colors, the, the yellow, the purple, and, and a black. So you don't even need to add a, add a shader here. You can just keep it without one. It's fine. So I like that. That looks good. Last but not least, if you want to mess with the strength, you can. I'm just going to keep it at 1 for now, but I would suggest adding in a value node, plugging it into both. So if you just want to quickly tweak it, you just tweak it in, in this one node, and you don't have to keep going between the two. So let's head into rendered view. All right, that's looking good. Let's add in some stars. We're going to add in, we're going to press a shift and C again to bring us to the center. Add in another plane, rotate on the X axis by 90 degrees. Move it in between the sun and the, the sky. 
I'm going to scale it up as well. Let's name it stars. Add a new material. Name that stars. Head into material view. And let's add in a mix shader. Add in a noise texture. And plug that factor in. And we're going to change the scale from 5 to 200. Then we're going to add a color ramp. And we're going to turn this down. Oops. There we go. Something like that. Just little dots, which will be our stars. All right. Then um, we're going to add in a transparent node. Plug that into the bottom. And we're going to get rid of the diffuse, and we're going to add in an emission. Plug that in. So you can't really see anything right now, so let's head over to rendered view. Set the strength to 5 to make them pop a little bit more. And if you want, you can kind of go to like a yellowish color. Just whatever you want to do. So that's looking okay. So one thing you'll notice is the stars are just, they start at the very bottom and go up. And that doesn't really look very good. So um, let's add in another mix shader. I'm going to add in, uh, let's, let's head over to material view. Let's add in a gradient texture. Plug that in. We can just change it to easing. Then we're going to rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degrees. Move it up. So this black is going to be transparent. So let's do that. Plug this transparent into there. Head back into rendered view. And that's much more natural looking. If you want, you can head back into material view. Uh, let's unplug the transparent just so we can see the gradient here. Scale on the z-axis. Maybe set it there. And let's head into rendered view. Plug the transparent back in. All right, yeah, that looks pretty good. So now it's time to mess with the water. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go into the modifiers. I'm going to change it to an ocean modifier. So as you can see, that's way too big. So let's scale it down. Head back into our camera view. So if we go into material view, we can see that it's cutting through the land. So I'm going to change the depth to 1. And I'm going to change the scale down here to 0 0.2. And that kind of evens it out a bit. So what we can do is press or scroll through the time, and you'll see it moves. So we kind of want to do this for a little while, make sure it doesn't go underneath the land again. Uh, we look good, though. This, this looks fine. So I'll go back to 1. And then we're going to mess with the material now. So go on the Material tab. And I'm going to turn on my PBR Materials uh, add-on, which I'll link to in the description. I absolutely love this add-on. You get a bunch of dielectric and metal materials to mess with. They're pretty uh, CPU and GPU heavy, but they look great. So I'm going to apply this car paint. And then I'm going to add in an image. I'm going to apply like a water texture to it. So let's plug the image in. I'll select my uh, tiled water texture. If you just Google water texture, I'm sure you'll find this. Or if anything, you'll find something similar. Let's see if we can move the camera up a little bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go back into rendered view. And you see we have this awesome looking like reflective water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the resolution from 7 to 16, which just gives us a more detailed mesh. So instantly here you can see we have like a way nicer looking reflection. So I'm going to kind of scroll through the time here until I find something I like. You can just add, you know add any number you want. 0.5. Uh, I like where this is going. Let's try like 2.2. .2. Oh, that looks cool. I like that. So there's our image. We're going to render this out and then we'll take it from there. All right, so here's our rendered result. I'm going to click down here on our uh, node tree and click Use Nodes. So it will start to composite a bit. What you might notice is it's kind of there's a few fireflies, you know, around here. So if we add in a glare, we'll really notice them. So I'm going to go into fog glow, set it to high quality. You can just kind of mess with it. 
Let's see, point five. I like that. So these kind of pop a little bit more, and we don't want those. So to address those, let's just plug our rendered layers back into the image. And we're going to save as image. And let's save it as seed one. As you can see, I have uh, some previous ones from when I did this tutorial uh, in practice before. But I'll save it as seed1.png. And then we're going to render it again. But what we're going to do is go into sampling. And we're going to change the seed to any number, anything other than zero. So I'll set it to one. And I'm going to render it again. And all right. We have our uh, second render here, and you, you'll still see the fireflies here, but what you probably don't notice is they're in completely different spots as it previously was. So I'm going to save this one as seed 2. Now I'm going to get rid of our rendered layers because we don't really need that anymore. I'm going to add in two images. I'm going to open our seed 1. Open our seed 2. All right, so we're going to add in a mix shader. All right, I guess it's not a shader, just a mix node. Plug the top one in, plug the bottom one in, go to image. And right now what we're just doing is mixing between the two, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to switch it to darken. And there you go, the fireflies have disappeared. So I'm going to plug our glare back in. Maybe, let's scroll in here. Point two, that looks pretty cool. It just makes it pop a bit. Um, except I see we've got a bit of a glitch here, so I'll put it back up. Maybe point 0.3. Let's try point 0.4. Alright, I'm happy with point 0.5. So, yeah, it definitely makes it pop a bit more. Then I'll add in some lens distortion. And I'll change the distortion to point 0.02. This just makes us uh, kind of bend a bit. I'll click fit so we don't have those black lines. So you can see uh, with and without. Then I'll add in a dispersion, 0 0.01 maybe. Maybe that's a little strong. All right. Uh, there's our finished image. And you can always go back and play with the lighting to get things to look different. Maybe you want more dramatic lighting. But that's the basic process of creating this image. So if you want to stick around, I'll show you how to do the animation. Hey, I'm going to jump in real quick. I'm recording this after I made the tutorial. I realized I forgot to mention that when it comes to animation, you're going to want to go back into the compositor and you're going to want to bring back in your render layer and plug that into your effects chain. Otherwise, if you keep this stuff plugged in, um, you're just going to keep rendering out this image sequence of just a bunch of the same image. So yeah, make sure you plug your render layer back into your effects chain or back into your uh, just composite node, whatever you're doing. It's very important. All right, so I'm going to get out of, press escape to get out of that view. And the great thing about this modifier, this uh, ocean modifier, is it makes animating it a breeze. Like, all you have to do is animate this time feature. So let's head over to our properties tab. If you've never done animation before, I'll try and give you a quick rundown. Um, our frame rate. Let's say we can keep it at 24 for this. You, you might want to do 60 if you're going to do some like the whole video of this animation. Um, I'll just keep it at 24. Basically, this is how many frames it takes per second, obviously. But it, what that really means is the higher your FPS, the more you have to render. So I'll just keep it at 24. And you might want to keep it at 24 if this is your first time doing an animation, just so you don't have to render a bunch of unnecessary things if you mess something up. Anyways, so 24, let's say we want a 10 second animation, so that uh, 10 times 24 would be 240. So I'm going to set the uh, start to 1 and 240. And first we're going to animate the camera. So I'll uh, select the camera and just press I and location. Then I'll go to 240 by clicking here, type in 240. Um, let's move the camera a little bit ahead. You don't want anything too fast. So let's mark that location. So if I go back to the beginning, we just kind of slowly move in here. It's not even that noticeable, but it, it's kind of like a subconscious thing. You, you do notice it, just it's not like you're focusing on it. So I like that. What we're going to do, though, is I'm going to change this to a graph editor. 
I'm going to select all of them and I'm, I'm going to press T and change it to linear. Basically, the way it's automatically set is on um, Bezier, which when the animation starts, it starts slow and then it ramps up to your max speed and then it slowly goes back down, which is fine for human movement because, for example, when you move your arm, you don't move it at a constant rate. You know, you when you start moving it, it's a little slow and then it gets up to your full speed. Then you kind of slow down to stop where you want to stop it. For a camera, it looks kind of weird. It's kind of um, disorienting if you do that with your camera. I mean, in some cases, not in all cases, but in this case, I certainly don't feel like it looked good. So I'm just going to change it again. Select all, press T, linear, press play. And now we're just moving at a constant speed forward. We're not, you know, starting slow, ramping up, and then slowing down. So let's go back to the water, click on the water, go into our modifier here. And I'm just going to, doesn't matter what I set it to, let's just set it at one. I'm going to press T. Oh, sorry, I'm going to press I. I'm going to go to 240. I'm gonna, let's just change it. Because I don't want it to be too fast. So let's just do 2.2. That should be okay. Oops. Press uh, I to set another keyframe. And again, with the graph editor still up, I'm going to select it all with just by pressing A. Press T in linear. Because again, I want the waves to move in a constant way. So let's see what that looks like. Maybe press Z, you can press Z too to see the movement going on. But we're definitely moving, and it's um, a nice subtle effect. Makes the image more interesting to look at. So that's the basis of how I animated it, guys. Uh, all you would do after that is go back into your Properties tab, select where you want to output to, and just press Animate. We do go back to the issue of the fireflies. So what I did, since this is such a simple scene and it was quick to render, is you would render one full animation, all 240 frames at one seed, and then change it you know, from 1 to 0 or 2 or any other number other than what your initial render was at. So you basically render it twice with the two different seeds. Then in your video editing software, you would uh, mix them via Darken like we did with the Im image composition. So you can just uh, search a tutorial or something on how to do that in your software. I did mine in Vegas and it was very easy to do. So that's it for me. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'd love to answer any questions. And I'd, as always, love to see anything you make with this tutorial. And see you next time, guys.